This training video is brought to you by K-Alliance. K-Alliance provides high-quality instructor-led training videos for desktop, IT and soft skills. Visit us online at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free 7-day trial. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and we hope you learned something new. Real videos, real learning, real success. Let's talk about how to record a macro and how to play back a macro. And when we're working on this lesson, there are two major things that I want you to focus on. Let me show them to you. The first major thing I want you to focus on is how do you record a macro? Well, on the developer ribbon, you have this button right here that will record a macro, or you have a button at the bottom of the screen that will record a macro. That's the first thing I want you to focus on. The second thing I want you to focus on is when we get to this button right here, the Use Relative References button, this is a huge feature inside of macro recording that you absolutely want to make sure that you grasp. So those are the two main issues here. Now, I bring that up because my macros may not have anything to do with what you do every day in your work world or in your personal world, but they are effective examples. They're very simple examples, but they're very effective examples on how to understand what you need to do to record a macro. So here's the first task. Here's how I actually, the very first time I ever learned how to do a macro. Here's what a gentleman needed. He would select a cell, and I'm using my keystroke of control Q. I created a macro that makes, whoops, I accidentally hit Q there, control Q, and it actually turns the cell yellow. And that was what he wanted. He wanted to be able to click on any cell and turn it yellow just like that, and he wanted to do it with a keystroke. That was his goal. How does he do that? It's very, very simple. Let me show you how you create a macro that simply changes a cell to another color. First thing about the recording of a macro, let me go to a different sheet over here. I just have the example that, was, that I just did. But you click on the cell. If the selection of the cell has nothing to do with the macro, you click on the cell prior to starting the macro. So from the time you click this button, record macro, until you click it again to turn it off, everything you're doing is going to be recorded. So you want to make sure that you're only doing those tasks that need repeating. OK, I'm going to call this macro erase. Now, there are some rules for macro naming. For instance, you can't use a name that exists somewhere else, like A1. That's the name of a cell reference. You cannot use spaces and a few other issues like that. But trust me, if you make a mistake with the, the naming of the macro, it'll tell you. Give it a keyboard shortcut. I'm doing control E. This is just my, I'm going to toss this macro, my erase macro. And where do you want to store it? Most of the time you'll be storing them in this workbook, but you might have a time when you want to use the personal macro workbook that actually stores it in Excel so it's available in any workbook that you'd like or in a new workbook. But really, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're probably choosing this workbook. And in the real world, take a few moments and type in a description because it'll help you later and help anyone who comes after you or uses your spreadsheet remember what this macro is all about. And then you simply say, OK. Oh, it doesn't like my name. And the reason for this, I forgot. I created a macro in here already named Erase. And so this one is simply because I already have a macro called that. I forgot that I did that earlier. So let me say OK, and we'll call this Erase. Two. How about that? And just in case my keyboard shortcut is a repeat, this one I'm going to do T, as in Tom. Now let's see what happens. See, I didn't mean to make that mistake, but as you can see, it, it won't let you make mistakes. Now I've already selected the cell. All I need to do is the repetitive task, and the repetitive task is pouring in the color. So we'll make this one kind of a gold, orangey color. And now I'm done. So I go back to the developer tools and say stop recording. I just click on that stop recording button. So now anytime I do control T, no matter where I am, whoops, you can't hit T, you have to do control T, it'll make the cell the color that I asked it to be. See the simple part is starting and stopping the macro. It's also easy to record the macro, you just have to know what your repetitive tasks are so that you can do them in the proper order and do the proper thing. Well now let me show you another another issue that this gentleman had. So another issue that this gentleman had is he needed to add into some spreadsheets, he needed to add an empty row of information. And so what he wanted to do, let me just zoom this in a little bit. What he wanted to do is he wanted to be able to highlight a cell and do this. Go to the Home tab, do Insert Row, and then go down two lines, 
and then do it again. Insert, row, and he needed to do this five times. So what he did is he repeated that same process five times and he recorded it as a macro. So let me hit undo, and let's actually go record that. But now this is where on the developer tab, this is where the ribbon use relative reference item is very, very essential. Because remember, if you click on a cell as part of the recording of your macro, it will always click on that cell, even using the arrows. So if you don't always want to choose cell A5 when you hit your down arrow, then what you have to do is say, use relative reference. So it says, oh, from wherever you are, just move down one. Absolutely. OK, so record macro. And I'll call this one insert, whoops, ERT rows. Insert, let's do insert five rows. Insert five rows. And you know, the keystroke, be careful, because there's already a key associated with it. Like if I do Control Z, that's the keystroke for undo. Then you won't be able to use Control Z for undo anymore. It'll be your keyboard shortcut for your macro. So be sure you choose something that you don't use. So I'm going to use Insert or Control D and then say OK. And now I go through the process. Home, insert, row, down arrow, down arrow, insert, row, down arrow, down arrow, insert, row, down arrow, down arrow, insert, row. Ooh, I'm starting to sound like a broken record, aren't I? But in the real world, that's what it would be like if you had to repeat this process over and over and over and over again. Well, I'm finished, so I go back to developer and I stop recording. Or remember, you have the button down here at the bottom. Let's go ahead and use that one so we don't forget. Now, I'm no longer recording my macro. So what happens now is when I need that process, let's just go down here and click on Joni. I do control and my keyboard shortcut. Whoop, hit the wrong keystroke there. Oh, shoot, now I've forgotten what I chose. Uh-oh. Folks, give me a second. I, should, I, I usually do a different one. What did I do? There we go. It was D as in dog. <laughs> I forgot which one I chose. Now, that's important, right? You need to remember what your keyboard shortcut is if you're going to use it. And I did one, two, three, four, five. I inserted five rows. Now, I can repeat this process anytime I remember my keyboard shortcut. I can keep going. But look, I accidentally started in the wrong spot. And something that you have to know about playing macros, so I want to go up and undo that. Mm, you cannot undo when you, when you play a macro and you do a task based on a macro. So another thing that I always do before I run my macros, I always save my workbook, then I run my macro. That way, if there's some task I need to undo, I can't undo it. I just close the workbook and then reopen it again, and I haven't caused any drama for myself. So even though I did that error on purpose, I know you're not going to want to be making errors on purpose. So here are the two goals of this lesson. One is that you know how to record a macro and how to stop recording. And the second one, that you learn how to use the relative references. The purpose of a relative reference is when you want to be able to select a specific cell, but it's not because you want that specific cell. It's because you want the pattern. I want to select and then go down one, and select and go down one, and select and go down one. That's an example of a relative reference. And I promise you, here's how you'll get better with relative references. Use them and make a few mistakes along the way. And then you'll say, oh, that's what she was talking about with relative references. So get out there and start recording macros for your repetitive tasks. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. Please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.